Hi, everybody. It's Yvonne DeVito from Scratchings and Sniffins Out Loud and Dr. Larry McDaniel. And today we are very fortunate to have a guest on our podcast who's going to talk to us about the Westminster Dog Show, which is coming up very, very soon. And our guest is Ernie Plank. He is the Director Emeritus of the Breeder Group at Perina. And I'm not sure what that means, but welcome, Ernie. And can you tell us what that title means? Uh, yeah, Yvonne, I'm actually retired from the company. <laughs> I consult on a part-time basis for them, so that's that's my title now as Director Emeritus. But I directed the Breeder Confirmation Group for Perina for 16 years. So Confirmation Group, and that has something to do with this whole dog show, Westminster. Can you explain what that means for our listeners? Yeah, a Conformation is a form of competition that dogs compete as to how they approximate a breed standard. There is a standard for a collie. There's a standard for a German Shepherd. There's a standard for a Boxer. And each of the individual breeds have a standard which breeders try to breed to that standard so the dog has the proper structure, movement, and temperament according to that conformation standard. Does the dog conform to the standard? So that's what that means. Ah, uh, that's interesting. Well, we're going to be talking with you uh, several times beyond this podcast because you have some more reading information and content that I would like to share with the listeners. But today, let's talk about your involvement in the Westminster Dog Show. And I have some questions that actually came off of Twitter because I'm a big Twitterer. And some of the people who follow me said, ask him this, ask him this. And then I have some questions of my own. And Dr. Larry, you know, jump in if you have a question that we don't ask. Yeah, I've got a couple. Okay. So let's start with the difference between the show today and what it was when you first started attending it. Are are they online now? Are they participating in social media? Oh, very much so. The Westminster Kettle Club is is the oldest dog show in the United States, and I think the only other uh, sporting competition that dates longer than that is the Kentucky Derby. Wow. So I, think, I think they're in their 127th year. It has grown as a brand, let's put it that way, because of the innovations that they've done with media. They've been on television for decades now, I think, on a live telecast that uh, mm-hmm. takes place on the USA channel. And it's the highest rated program USA has, the Westminster Dog Show. And so that live telecast has brought it to national attention as a very significant show. Today, where it varies is it was just a regular dog show, but because it's gotten so popular, they have to limit the number of dogs entered. And one of the reasons is because it takes place at Madison Square Garden, which has limited space for dogs. So their entry is capped at 2,500 dogs. There are shows that are much bigger than that. But because of space limitations, they go 2,500. And then what happened is people weren't able to get in and were frustrated that they couldn't enter the show. So then they moved it to only dogs that are champions, and that's dogs that have competed in enough shows to get a championship ranking. Ah, that was going to be my next question. Yes, and so they have to be champions of record. And you have to win. There's a whole criteria in how to become a champion, but once you're a champion, you know, the whole thing is, well, now the breeder can go and back and breed that dog because it's met the breed standard to become a champion. See what I'm saying? At, when it competes against other dogs and is noted as being better than the average Like the Kentucky dog. Derby. Yeah, kind the of. horses. Fun. Hey, Ernie, let me ask you a question about that. So I was looking at the list of invitees on their website. Are they? These are the top dogs in their breed from across the country Based on a point total, is that how they do it? That's correct, Larry, and that is new. It's just a few years old that people were so upset that they couldn't get entered in the competition because it would fill up so fast. Right. And some of the top dogs weren't allowed to compete because they didn't get their entry in on time. So what they did is they said, oh, okay, now we'll invite the top five dogs in each breed, and that has to do with their competition record. And it really is how many dogs of their breed that they, quote, defeat that they go up against and get uh, adjudicated as better in their confirmation than the other dog. And so they now invite the top five of every breed. Now it's up to the owners whether they want to enter or not, 
but they get first right of refusal. If they only have five per breed in each one of the best of breed competitions that leads up to the best in show? Yeah, well, they're entered in a best of breed competition, that's correct, in Westminster. The top five are invited to enter. And then they yeah. have to compete that day with that judge who will say which dog they feel or female which they call bitch, you know, dog or bitch, hmm. is adjudicated as the best example of the breed by that individual judge. See what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. you know, for any given day, any of those dogs can beat each other, depending on the judge and the day and how they perform. Yeah, I know. Yvonne and I were talking about this this morning, that the, uh, the whole judging process, we know it applies to that dog against the breed standard, and maybe you could tell people a little bit about that. But also, is it subjective? Is there some subjective uh, component to it? There has to be. With one person making a decision in their opinion, which dog is better than the other, certainly there are preferences involved. And that's not good or bad, but that's just that person's opinion of what they think the breed standard is. There's a standard that's written down just like anything else, but it's subject to interpretation. Mm, right. And so everybody says, well, you know, a square head to me means this versus that. Right. Or a straight top line is preferred versus a little slope and what mm-hmm. top line means. And so words have their limitations, and really you have to judge the whole pack of the dog, and each judge does have their favorites. It's just like Miss America. And you're looking at pretty women, but mm, maybe one judge prefers blondes over brunettes. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so how do you get to be a judge then? Well, you have to have experience in breeding. There's a whole criteria. You have to have been a, a breeder, and then you apply through the American Kennel Club. This Westminster show is an American Kennel Club show. That's the registry. And they're the ones that really school, teach, and tutor these people to become approved in different breeds. And the American Kennel Club has to approve them as a judge by a particular breed, group, et cetera. Interesting. Yeah. So the way it works at Westminster is they do the best in breed competitions and then the final one is where they have all the breeds competing against each other for the best in show award. Is that how it goes? Uh, yeah, there's three steps and three judges. The first step is best of breed and they're a particular breed like a beagle or a greyhound. And there's one judge that will put a dog up what's called best of breed. Then that dog qualifies to go in what's called the group competition. And the way oh. it's, it's set up now is that there's there's seven groups, the herding group, the sporting group, the hound group, et cetera. See what I'm saying? And, right. And, and those breeds, and then that's when you have different breeds competing against each other according to do they approximate the standard of that breed. And right. so you, once you win your breed, you go to the group, and that's what's on television on uh, Monday and Tuesday night. You see the group judging. Right. Uh, they have four groups on Monday and three groups on Tuesday, plus best in show. Then the dog that wins the group, the group winner, goes into best in show. So at the very end of the, it's it's really an elimination process. At the at the end of the show, there are seven dogs left standing, and of those seven dogs that won each group, there will be a best in show dog. So the groups again, can you give us the name of the group and then an example of a dog breed within that group? Okay, the hound group. There's the beagle. There's the greyhound. Okay, that's hounds. There's a herding group, which are German shepherds, collies. Corgis, Border Collies, those are herding. Toy groups are all the little small dogs, you know, the little Yorkies and the Minpins and Italian Greyhounds, the little teeny dogs. Sporting group is the Retrievers, the Setters, et cetera, Uh uh, you know, do upland uh, game hunting, birds and waterfowl, et cetera. There's what's called a non-sporting group, which is kind of a miscellaneous class for all different kinds of companion animals, the Bulldog or the... um, They've actually put the poodle in that. That's controversial because the poodle used to be a hunting dog. Right. Or the miniature poodle or the Sharpe. And, and then uh, there's a, a terrier group, too? There's a terrier group, yep. I affectionately call the terrorists. And, you know, <laughs> they, and they're, you know, they're those little, they're, they've got a lot of spunk and spirit. They were originally bred to hunt in the earth, groundhogs and vermin and stuff and like vermin that. Vermin and stuff like that, yeah. They're pretty nasty. But uh, they're good companion animals. There's a lot of different terriers. The Airedale Terrier, there's the Lakeland Terrier, the Fox Terrier, et cetera. Yeah, there's seven groups right now. All right. Well, hey, Ernie, thanks a lot. This is great. So I think we'll sign off today, and we'll be in touch. I will let our readers know when our next podcast is going to be. And, Ernie, thanks for being on board. My pleasure.